Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the Eddie and Webby Podcast. Yo, I'm going to bust out some theme song action for you. Check it out. The Eddie and Webby Show is the place to be. They're talking about beer and pickleball and technology. So if you didn't know, now you know. Because it's time for the Eddie and Webby Show. On today's episode, Eddie and Webby Bowl a Perfect Game. This is the Eddie and Webby Podcast. All right, we'll paint a happy little pickleball here. Oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby Nut. Hold on one second. Hello? Yeah, this is Webby Nut, Eddie. No way. You want me to meet with Dr. Dre and Eminem in a recording studio in Detroit as soon as possible? Yeah, I am interested. All right, I'll head there right now. Bye. Um, so Eddie, you're not going to believe this, but something just came up and I actually have to leave right now. So I think you're going to have to do this podcast without me today. Um, but I'm sure you'll do a great job. I'm sure it's going to be an awesome episode, but I, uh, yeah, I got to get going right now. See ya. Well, folks, you heard it there. This is Eddie and this is our 34th podcast. Webby is not going to be able to join us today, so it's just going to be me, and we are live. We are live from Bonita Springs, Florida, home of the uh, the Bonita Springs YMCA, Peak Performance Pickleball Academy, excuse me, uh, and we have a really exciting show for you today. It's going to be a little bit different, so I want to talk about that. Uh, totally unscripted. Maybe we'll have some guests on board. You never really know, but super exciting. Uh Today is mixed doubles, as I mentioned, and uh, we have some really good matches. There's actually a match going on in the background here, which you might be able to see by me uh, pointing to it, but there you go. You see it, Simone Jardim and Kyle Yates out there. Plenty of other great uh, great matches we're going to be watching. Uh, Sarah Ansbury and Tyson McGuffin are playing together. I um, also saw Regina Franco and Morgan Evans out there, which is pretty cool, and Corinne Carr, Colin Johns, so... Yesterday was men's doubles open and women's doubles open, and today is mixed doubles. Um, we did have some technical issues yesterday that we're still trying to work out. Uh, I was very fortunate enough to work with Carl, uh, Carl Schmitz over there, to, uh, to do some commentary during the live stream. We were also joined by Josh J. Pickleball, uh, and his commentary was absolutely incredible. We were so lucky to have him. And uh, stay tuned, guys, because honestly, we are going to have some pretty, pretty amazing stuff going on here uh, throughout the entire day. So definitely stay tuned, and uh, we will talk to you guys in a little bit. Welcome, everybody. We have our first round of guests today that I'm super excited to uh, to interview with you. Uh, the first guest, she's actually been on the show before. You guys know her. You guys love her, Cassandra Gerke, and her mixed doubles partner adam stone welcome guys everything good yeah well we tried to be good but yeah. uh we did our best today and yeah um, it's a tough tournament and obviously that's why we came out here to play the best competition so yeah, we, this is yeah we, we were good for a couple matches and not so good for a couple <laughs> matches that, that's how it goes so. okay <laughs> lost, um lost to some quality teams today yeah so can't yeah be too mad about that. so who who was the toughest team you played against the f- our first Putting round, on the spot, right? Fir- first round and our last round. So we played Morgan, Evans, and Regina Franco. Came out a little flat, and they got us. And then uh, got busted out by Joey Farias and Catherine Parento. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're good players. So Yeah. They're definitely a tough team, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I hit Morgan way too many balls, so yeah. uh, you're welcome, Morgan. <laughs> My partner didn't appreciate it as much, but I'm sure you had a great time. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, were you guys having fun, though? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we had a blast. We've never played together before, yeah. and actually, that was probably the best part of today. We had a lot of fun yeah, together. We did. We did. 
Yeah. I mean, that, uh, to me, that's important too. Like, obviously, you want to win, right? But you also want to have a good experience and having a partner that you know you can both play well with at each other and get along. You know, nothing worse than ha- how about this? It's horrible when your partner sucks, right? Yeah, right. Doesn't that suck for you? <laughs> can you answer that question? I'm sure you can answer that pretty well. No, no, no. Come on now. Oh, that's awesome. Selling yourself short. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a, we had a blast today, yeah. and uh, the weather's really nice. So that's another factor, I guess, of this tournament is. I mean, you go out there for five, ten minutes, and you're just soaking wet. Yeah, right. And, so uh, so I'll that probably, I probably let the team down a little bit today. I had a decent run yesterday, and still feeling it a little bit from that. So. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about yesterday because, um, for those of you guys that don't know, Adam, you and Deckel were able to pull off silver in men's doubles, right? Yeah, we had a good run. Uh, Deckel, he hasn't been playing for that long. He's a former uh, professional tennis player from Israel, and He's got some game for sure. So uh, we we had some tough matches and we uh, pulled out a silver. Pretty happy about it. And um, had you guys played a lot before? No, he he actually uh, hadn't played in five and a half months. And then uh, he's we've been here about ten days. So we did practicing leading up to it for ten days, and that's really all that we've done. We played one tournament last year, tournament of champions, and had a decent run in that as well. Uh, but for since then, so I don't know, I guess that's six months ago or seven months ago, we, we hadn't played at all. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was impressive. You know, I got a chance to do live commentary for Carl Schmidt's live stream yesterday. I had so much fun watching your matches, man. They were oh, intense. Thanks. And, thanks. Uh, you know, you guys were super consistent. Like, it was awesome. It was just yeah. really cool to see. Yeah, he's great to play with. He's very yeah. positive. Uh, so it's it's fun. Whether, whether the results are good or bad, it's usually fun to play with him. So That's cool. Yep. But you, you have a background in tennis, right? I do. I played uh, Division Two tennis okay. for two years and Division Three tennis for two years. And I uh, did a little coaching after that uh, as well as the uh, grad assistant and the full-time assistant at the University of Texas at Tyler. So, okay. So I played quite a bit of tennis in my life for sure. Is that where you're from originally in Texas? Yeah, from, uh, from Houston is the hometown, yes. Okay. Most of my family still lives there. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But right now, where are you living? Uh, I would say there, but I'm not really there very much. So I'm kind of traveling around just playing pickleball this year, and so far so good. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh-huh. That sounds like fun. I want to do that. Can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just quit your job and just do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what do we it. did. Yeah, yeah right, just pull right, the trigger right. and just go. Quit your job. Yeah. Quit. <laughs> yeah. It's for the birds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this playing pickleball sure beats working, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, you guys work really hard, dude, so it's definitely, you know, I, I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to, to have pickleball be, you know, my source of income or my job. Like, that would be, well, first of all, I'm nowhere near you guys' skill, so it wouldn't happen, but still, I think it would be awesome. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a true pickleball pro. Made yeah. about two or three thousand, spent about twenty. Nice, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah that's you, so that's good stuff. You know, using that analogy, <laughs> then I would consider myself breaking my, even. Right, so. yeah. <laughs> Following that analogy, then Webby and I are podcast pros because it's basically the exact same oh, thing, yeah. except for like the two to three thousand is like twenty-seven dollars, <laughs> and the twenty thousand oh, that's about it's reasonable. About, it's about right. Yeah, that's awesome. But you, you, um, you also play a different sport competitively is that even i don't know uh, is it a sport is it we'd probably go with a game a game yeah, I'd say, okay I'd say it's a game yeah. okay but uh when i was when i was coaching tennis i was i also was supplementing my income with a little bit of poker play and probably the last five or six years i kind of just cut the tennis out and just did poker okay so that's been my profession for the last few years and uh I'll probably pick it up again after this year, but I'm, I'm taking the year off uh, this year, and we'll see what happens. Do you find that there's any parallels between poker and pickleball? I do. I do. I think that, you know, just kind of some risk-reward, you know, just pickleball is a lot of risk-reward. You know, if you're if you're getting benefit, you're uh, hitting winners, you know, you can go for your shots, but if you're not, you kind of need to dial it back a little bit, and so... Uh, your shot selection is really important, and risk reward, and when to go for it in poker is. I think is there, there's some parallels there for sure. Yeah, bluffing. Do you do that a lot in pickleball? Uh, 
I don't think so. There's no. not maybe a little bit, maybe a little shoulder fake, yeah. head fake here and there is a little bit of a bluff, but yeah. <laughs> Instead of you need to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, it's you need to know when to dink, know when to to drive. Just like that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's pretty cool though. I've I've actually never met anybody who's played poker competitively we used to do you know texas holding tournaments right. with buddies and stuff like that but yeah, never it's a, it's a hard way to make an easy living so, <laughs> yeah there, there you go <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah it's like you have to be at the top one percent to it's, it's, to really make it right it's pretty stressful not a whole lot of people go to work and lose four thousand dollars so. right right exactly yeah. so sometimes it's tough but if you put in your hours and and you you play enough uh, usually the skill will rise to the top okay that's yeah. awesome uh, if you guys have any questions for Adam on Facebook, go ahead and throw them Whoa. in the chat there. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. we're going to see what's going to come out of that. But um, we're not done with you just yet, but I do want to move over to Cassandra here. Um, what's going on? You So you were on the show back in December. Yes. And we had a good time. What's, what's, what have you been up to since then? Um, basically just tournament after tournament after tournament. Um, I try to keep busy, probably too busy. I probably have something going on every weekend, whether it's teaching or a uh, tournament. Yeah. And it was nice to get out here. I didn't do any teaching, but to be able to play this caliber of uh, players is, is good for me because then I can go home and kind of right. <laughs> brush up on everything, you know, from after the weekend. So it's been awesome being able to get out here and, and play everybody because at home, you know, we, we have decent players and we have some good players, but it's nothing like, you know, the, the level here and how many 5-0s are here and how mm -hmm. easy it is to get games like that. So it's been great. I, I looked at the, um, the list of players a few weeks ago that were going to be at this tournament and I was like, what? What? Are you, what? Are you, what? I, yeah. I was so confused. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, how are, you know, top pros all going to be here in this in this same area for the same tournament? That was amazing. Yeah, Simone and Chad did a really good job at organizing this. And this is actually a YMCA, which to me was like, I blew my mind because the YMCA is at my, you know, back home. <laughs> or like, just the gym and right. to have pickleball, there's eight courts here. And she said they're only planning on expanding and getting more. Is I was like, whoa, that's just totally different. I've never seen a YMCA with pickleball courts. So. Oh, yeah, you got to love it. it. Especially one of the things I love about this venue is Nice bathrooms, right? Nice, yeah. nice, very nice restroom facilities. Air conditioning. So if you're out here in the hot Florida sun, you have a chance to be able to go uh, and and get you know plenty of shade too, which is nice. So I was, I was inside quite a bit yesterday. Yeah. In between matches. Yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, it's th this is a really cool facility. W was this both your first time at this facility? Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. I, I I was here a few days early, so I did some practice here. Yeah. But before that, yes, I, I had not been here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, one other exciting thing, Cass, that has happened since you were on the podcast is you had a milestone birthday, didn't you? I did. Yeah. yeah 21. Tw so, uh, <laughs> uh, forever. Yeah, that's quite a laugh from him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Quite I a know, laugh. right? It's like, 21. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. It's actually 30. So, yeah, I did I did get a chance to take a weekend off and celebrate yeah. the 30 30. Um, and just yeah. hang out with my friends and kind of relax. So that was that was a nice little break in That's between cool. the tournaments and teaching. So I have a little funny story about that. Uh oh. Yeah. Ooh, right. Do tell. Yeah, live. Nobody knows about this, but well, Webby knows about it. Um, I, you had posted that you were going to be at a place called the Dock. Was that right for your? Yeah. Yeah. For to celebrate your 30th birthday back back home where you're from, yes. right? Yes. So Webby and I were like, you know what? As a thank you to Cass for being on the show. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can call them up and and buy a round of drinks, right? Oh. So, <laughs> so we get a hold of the owner, and and we're texting, and I'm like, yeah, you know, Cass is gonna be up there. Um, you know, can can you just buy a round on us and just say it's from Eddie Webby and, and just tell her we appreciate her being on. Uh, got everything squared away. Sent my credit card information over. Um, well, what happened, Cass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, that's super cool that you guys did that. So the dock, I, I'm from Marshall, Wisconsin. It's like a yeah. little small farm town and the, do, the dock's just outside of that. And we were in Madison, which is about 20, 25 minutes away. And we kind of made one stop and never made it out there. So 
drinking Pepsi, of course. Of course. It gets people a little crazy. So. Yeah, we, we wanted a round of Pepsis oh, no. for sure. Well, you so. guys are awesome. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's cool. It's just funny because because I had checked on Facebook the next day and I was like, that's weird. I thought, you know, even just like a nice little text saying, oh, yeah. thank you guys so much for that or whatever. And I didn't get right. anything. I'm like, oh, maybe, so maybe she had too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then I look and you're like on Facebook the next day. Sorry, I didn't even make it to the dock. And I was like, oh, Son man, you got to be kidding me. Oh, no. So I'm so sorry. That, that, that's really cool that you guys did that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, next time I'll yeah. try to be where I'm supposed to be. Now you owe us a round, I <laughs> yeah, think. Yeah, I do owe you a round. Yeah, we'll have to do that. That's awesome. <laughs> I thought that was a funny story, though. Oh, that's hilarious. Pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else is going on? Anything else you guys want to talk about today? Yeah. Um, do you go home today or tomorrow? I, I will be here for another week. Wow. Yeah. So I'm going to actually believe that Joey Farias and I are going. Simone and Chad did a great job this tournament, but I think they're a little tired. So... Joey and I are going to run a clinic for the volunteers and the referees, and while Simone and Chad take a couple days off, and so I'm going to do that for a couple days, and then uh, this upcoming weekend I'm going to go to the villages outside of Orlando for an exhibition. Okay. Yeah, so I think they have quite a few. I think they have t uh, 12 solid players up there, and we're going to do some teaching and some playing and have a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. How do, how do I get in on this uh, Adam Stone clinic here? <laughs> right? Yeah, I could use a little, a little a couple, lesson. A couple of people took it today, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, really? Oh, no, not. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing, I noticed that you're, um, you have an awesome forehand roll, like absolutely incredible. How can you teach that to me? Uh, I was asking I the know. same thing. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> Play tennis for 20 years, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. so is that something that you just developed naturally from a tennis background? Uh, I think so. I think that, yeah. that obviously there's some nuances of pickleball that take a little while to get used to, but having the tennis background, the court sense, some of the wristy stuff and spins and stuff like that just kind of comes naturally. So, yeah, having that background helps a lot. Okay. So, but so I mean, if you're just a natural pickleballer, you usually have some funky stuff. Yeah. So tennis players a little more readable. She got some funky stuff over mm -hmm. here, which also works yep. well. Funky. What what what's an example of the funky stuff? The, uh, the cast funk. Yeah, my backhand punch is a little funky, but <laughs> it uh, people seem to have a hard can, time can with it. Can you demonstrate it for us real quick? <laughs> 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 yeah. There it is. Yeah. But, yeah. So that's a little unorthodox, um, and. Uh, you know, the way I hold it sometimes gets me in trouble when I'm flipping from one side to the other. So yeah. I've just kind of been working on that. But okay. yeah, it was kind of nice with us today because he's got a good forehand. I have a good backhand. So yeah. I don't think anything really went down the middle today. Yeah, so <laughs> that was yeah, good. They just beat us up the line. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they're hitting, they hit good shots they did. too. So you got to give them some credit sometimes, yeah. you know. That's yeah. awesome. Well, that's cool. I, I'd love to have you guys on. Thank you so much. You seem to have a great attitude about everything that went down. So. Any closing thoughts, any any wisdom that you can share with us? I think, I think we might have said it all. Yeah? Appreciate yeah. you too. It's been yeah. fun. Oh, it's yeah. my pleasure, guys. I'll be happy to, to have you guys on the show anytime, so thank you very much for that. Yeah, well, I owe you a round of drinks. You do. And, <laughs> yeah. and Webby, so. Hey, yeah. He, he got credit and he got his money back. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's perfect situation. I love it. Right? Great setup. Yeah. I'm going to do this now. I'm just going to start calling all these bars and being like, hey, yeah, can right. you buy this person a round of drinks? <laughs> yeah, Cass is coming. Yeah, so make, him, just, make her feel guilty talk. about it, and then I get a round, right? There you go. There you go. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys again. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks thank for you. having us. Yeah. So that's it for, uh, for our first interview of the day. Uh, we're going to have plenty more coming for you in the very near future. And welcome back, everybody. Uh, again, we are here at the Florida Grand Slam in Bonita Springs, Florida, and having a great time. I have two more guests now that I was able to, uh, to con into bringing on the podcast with me. I waited until they were nice and relaxed and, and willing to say yes here. So please welcome... Joey Farias and Michael Leonard. What's going on, guys? Not much. Uh, just, yeah, hot. Yeah. Hot, and, hot and humid out here for sure. Yeah, this is unseasonably hot for the semi I mean, You know that, Michael, because you're from yeah. here. So yeah. usually this is like the time that we actually get to relax and enjoy a little bit of cooler weather, but not this winter. It's been like this the last few weeks. So, Jeez. And yeah, high 80s, I would yeah. say, this weekend. Yep. And climbing, it seems like. So. Ugh. Well, we don't want to bore you guys with all these weather <laughs> facts, so let's actually talk to uh, to Michael and Joey here. Um, so, Joey, let's start with you. You had a, a 
a little bit of success here yesterday at the tournament, didn't you? Yeah, not not too bad. I got <laughs> stuck with a partner I really didn't want to play with. It was Kyle Yates. <laughs> Never heard um, of him. Yeah, who? Yeah, yeah. for who? some reason it seemed like Ben wasn't going to play this at the beginning of the year or maybe when they were trying to commit to tournaments this year. Yeah. So he asked me. I was like, fine, if Ben's not going to do it, I guess I will. <laughs> Someone's got to do it, right? And th- Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then Ben was going to come and play with his brother later on that he found out he could make it. And luckily... <laughs> He was stuck in the uh, airplane stuff and weather out, no- out in the northeast, out in Maryland, back at school. So yeah. didn't have to worry about him this weekend. Luck- so that, luckily, that, that right? Helped. <laughs> that helped. In the sure. nicest way possible. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, I mean, yeah. You know, <laughs> I guess it kind of worked out pretty well in your favor. So. Oh, for sure. It's funny you said Kyle Yates, who, uh, when I was at the, uh, what would this been, the East Naples Winter Classic, Kyle's mom was selling paddle tech paddles there and uh, Nancy Robertson, the tournament director, walks me over and she's like, oh, this is Kyle Yates' mom. And I'm like, who? And she's like, do you really not know? I'm like, no, it's kind of a joke. Everybody knows who he is. So yeah, it's funny. Like, Kyle, Kyle who? I don't know who that yeah. is. Yeah, he, people shouldn't know who he is. He, he's okay. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like a four or five, four <laughs> out maybe, at best. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even have a paddle named after him yet. No, yeah. no, he does. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So this is the uh, the Trash Talk Kyle Yates podcast. That's Welcome, right. everybody. <laughs> no, he, he was, it was awesome to play with him. Um, just to be finally on the same side of him, you get to really, really see um, how much uh, the brains he has for the game. I mean, yeah. just unbelievable uh, what he saw, what he was telling me, just the way he would talk about certain things. Such a great competitor. Um, yeah, and just, I mean, the guy just doesn't miss very much. It's its crazy. Yeah, it's pretty incredible how consistent he yeah. is, too. But uh, you're not too shabby yourself there, Joey. Well, <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was uh, usually try to stay as consistent as possible. That's kind of yeah. what I do. I can attack a little bit here and there when I, when I really need to. But for the most part, I'm just... Uh, Sticking to to the basics here and keep the ball nice and low until I get a high one. Yeah. All right, that's the name of the game. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So so where where did you learn how to play pickleball? So I got a job in Lansing, Michigan, as a director of junior tennis, um, out at the MAC. This was um, let me think, two and a half, almost three years ago. All right. Maybe three years ago now. Uh, yeah, and at the end of the our courts on the outside, we had a um, four pickle dedicated pickleball courts out there. So, well, uh, one of my first days out there, it, we our foursome was myself, another pro, DJ Howard, and then I ha- was lucky to have Corinne Carr and Simone Jardine. <laughs> so, me and Simone, wow. that was our first day ever on the court. Corinne and DJ had been playing maybe a month, if that. Yeah. Uh, very, very little. So, yeah, it was uh, just crazy how it's turned out since then. And it was ended up being a pretty good little group of players to, to be able to practice against. Oh, we were just talking oh, about you. Yeah. Go. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> a scrub. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So, so you got to learn how to play pickleball when Simone learned how to play pickleball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, the scariest thing was, you know, we're learning together. I am being super creative on the court, trying all these new shots and inside-out volleys and all sorts of stuff. And anything I ever did to her that worked, like within two shots, she did it right back to me. <laughs> and just smiled. And I was like, shit. Like, it, yeah, so she was just always, I mean, just adapt adapted yeah. and uh yeah just picks up anything that is if she thinks she needs to learn it she's she'll get it pretty quickly yeah that's awesome yeah so you you met her in michigan how long did you live in michigan for i was there for two years two years yeah in the and lansing then, area right in the lansing area yeah and then got a pickleball job as the director of pickleball out of the country club in uh tucson arizona okay and i did that for about a year and a half full time and then Recently, this year, starting as January, I've been on my own, just traveling the country and teaching everywhere. Pickleball so. nomad. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Well, that's great. I mean, obviously, it's working for you. Yeah, it's been nice. Got a gold medal yesterday. Let's talk a little bit about uh, today, though. You played with Catherine, right? Yes. I want to tell you that 
Webby and I were at the Beer City Open this past summer, and uh, I was living up in Grand Rapids for about a month, and we went there, and pickleball was still, still very new for us. We didn't really know a whole lot that was going on, and we show up at the Beer City Open, and I'm watching these matches, and one of the first pro matches that I watched was you and Catherine, and I was like, this is how people play pickleball? Because in my community, we were just whacking the ball around, basically playing tennis in the pickleball court. We had very little strategy. We were just trying to learn it. And then I saw you guys, and I was like, wow, that's how you're supposed to play the game. Yeah. Um, so one of the benefits from learning from Simone was being able to find a – so some, she played under Simone at Michigan State Tennis. Mm -hmm. And um, she once she was done with tennis, she still had another year of school or maybe a semester of school, and she started v playing pickleball with us and got very good very quickly. And that was another benefit where I was able to kind of be like, hey, you want to partner up for right. a lot of these tournaments. So we've been playing um, some of these for quite a bit. And, yeah, just um, that uh, Beer City Open, we had some good wins. And we ended up, I think we ended up in fourth there. Mm -hmm. One of the teams that we beat early on ended up coming back and beating us in a game of 15 out there. I think it was Irina and Callan Dawson. Okay. Yeah. yeah, some amazing matches there. Are you planning on playing in it again this year oh for sure yeah. yeah so i'll be playing with uh dave weinbach there oh nice um in the for the men's and then mixed i am not sure yet we i'm still looking uh not sure what Catherine if Catherine's going to make it out this year or not or okay so yeah that's awesome um there's other exciting news coming up here too huh that you want to share with the world yeah uh i guess maybe a couple days ago on the 21st uh Tim Nelson, the puppet master, came out with uh, Steve Pronto's new podcast and introduced that he was coming back this year. And um, yeah, so I met Tim. That's I'll be playing with him in all three majors uh, this year, as well as I believe Atlanta. Um, and yeah, I met him two months into being into Tucson, Arizona. It was uh, quite a funny story because it was. I get there, I call some ambassadors out there to see where pickleball is being played because I had no yeah. clue. And the second day, I get a knock on my door at like 8 a.m., and it's the pickleball ambassador coming to come pick me up. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Tom Stars. Yeah. In a limo? Yeah, you know, he just yeah, came right. to pick me <laughs> up and, yeah. and, and uh, asked me if I was interested in going to go play some pickleball. So yeah. I went out, um, went and played. They didn't know... Um, really who I was yet and went out there, played with a bunch of three fives and four O's, had some fun. Um, a bunch, it was a little bit of an older crowd. And then the following day or two days later, they tell me, Hey, we have another young guy that that's going to give you, uh, you know, competition. And I get out there. It's another young guy. He's probably four O just moves really fast and hit the ball hard. So that was fun kind of toying with yeah. him and now he became a great player his name's sean rickard we've been working together and then sean tells me hey there's a really really good guy that's actually your level that's playing out at u of a with a bunch of three fives or three o's that are teachers of u of a that play pickleball so um i go out there and i see tim nelson yeah. playing with these guys and i'm looking and I'm, you know i talked to him i was like do you know who this guy is yeah yeah it's like Holy crap. That was like one of the first videos I ever watched whenever. Uh, so I got into pickleball with Simone. She played a tournament, did really well. I was like, you know, what? I'm going to go play a tournament too. Yeah. So I wanted to see how tournaments were played and top level. I put in top level pickleball on YouTube and Boom. Tim Nelson <laughs> came out. <laughs> so I see this guy, yeah, playing out there. And yeah, we, we, we played a bunch and I uh, guess he respected my game some. So throughout last year or that year, so this must have been two years ago. Uh, he kind of helped me out with different players and strategies and stuff. You know, he would right before uh, nationals in the U.S. Open, you know, just telling me, you know, hey, this guy likes to do this. This guy likes to do that. Have you ever played against him? Stuff like that. Um, and then probably this past must have been this past August that he, I got a message from him that he's finally ready to to come back. Finished. Uh, okay. Finished law school. Yeah, that's right, because he, he took a, a couple-year hiatus for law school, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Took a couple years, went to law school at U of A. That's where got lucky in the past year. He's, I think he was in China finishing the wow. law degree out there. 
Yeah, super smart guy. Yeah. Loves to, and uh, so he's fluent in Spanish because he went. I think he. I think he did a year of high school out in either Mexico or in Spain, okay. or something yeah. like that. And then basically same thing for he wanted to learn Chinese. So wow. he wanted to go throw himself. I mean, in if, there. yeah, if you're gonna learn Chinese, yeah. why not go to China, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's why. Yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, and then he calls me, telling me he's gonna make his comeback and he would love to play with me. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, I was like, hey. Play with the legend of the game, right? <laughs> yeah, it would be awesome if I. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna get watched at least. Because I've yeah. I've either heard or read in the past that uh, you know you've been asked who your favorite player is or whatnot, and you've you've named him before. Oh, for sure. So that's I mean, how cool is that that now you actually get the opportunity to play? Yeah, with I mean him that too. guy was one of the original like just creative players of the game where he yeah. would his game look didn't look like everybody else's mm-hmm. you know he was just very very creative out there he had the basics of everybody else with a little of his own flair yeah. which was which was really cool to see yeah there's yeah. some great stuff on youtube some of his oh, his plays God, yeah. so well that's awesome man i look forward to seeing those matches are you you said you're going to be in all three of the majors yeah all, all right. three of them nice well that's awesome well, well thank you joey i appreciate that man Michael, you've been uh, you've been patient over there, ready. <laughs> Chiming in every so often. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, definitely want to get to you because uh, you're 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 a Floridian. You were born and raised here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, is, is this your first time coming down to this facility? Yeah, yeah. I've never uh, I've never been down into Bonita Springs. Um, I've never actually played a U.S. Open either. Oh, really? Uh, so. This year will be my first U.S. Nice. Open as well. Have you been to East Naples yet? I've played there once. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We had a group that got together, and um, I think we had either eight or twelve good okay. players, and just played uh, just some rec games. Yeah. So yeah. What, what did you good. think of it? Uh it's it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I I can tell why they have it there now. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's where I play on the weekends usually when I'm not playing in my community over okay. at East Naples. But I got to tell you, the one thing I love about this facility is decent bathrooms i'm not i'm not knocking east naples they're they're they have bathrooms which is more than you can ask for a lot of facilities but the air conditioning on the inside too i never realized how important that was if you need to take a break and you need to get out of the sun especially out here in south florida yeah yeah absolutely yeah so this this facility has been great um but you you live in sarasota now right yeah so i was born in inglewood and um funny story i actually moved to michigan and to lansing so <laughs> i different times i didn't know joey at the time but i played with some of the same people up there dj howard i yeah. played with him um i think simone and corinne moved on at the time and Catherine was still up there at the time okay um i think getting ready to move down to miami and that's correct yeah, um, that right? yeah. simone got the job out at east naples she was the first one to leave for pickleball. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple months later, Corinne got the call that she was going to go teach out in. It wasn't. She didn't move to the Carolinas yet. I want to say it was. Okay. I cannot remember right now, but it was she moved up northeast. Before, yeah. Okay. Uh, she moved somewhere before where she is now in North Carolina, and then, yeah, like two months after that, I got the call that um, they wanted me out in Arizona. So kind of all moved to different pickleball spots except for Corinne. Corinne, Corinne was a doctor in yeah. finance and mm, was wow. going to go uh, teach um, some college. And Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, DJ, was the first thing I heard was, you moved out here and now we got another great player and he needs some more people to play against. And it was Mike Leonard here. That was uh, in 2017, April, I moved and I stayed there for a year. Um and I moved back to Florida for job reasons. So, um, yeah, it's nice to be back in the heat right now, yeah. but not in the snow, at least. But, yeah. yeah. See, I, I lived in Michigan until I was mid-30s, you know, early to mid-30s, and then moved down here to Naples, and I'm not going back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no it's, way. it's hard to move once you've been in it. And, yep. Yeah, I understand now. Not going back. Yeah. Love it here too much. Man. I got to go back. Yeah. Yep. That's my wife's right there right now, actually. So all her okay. family's out in Detroit. So yeah, yeah, I'll be back there after. So I spend another week here doing an exhibition at the Villages yeah. next weekend, and then uh, taking off to Detroit and Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo for a couple of days. Are you going to be at the Grand Rapids tournament next weekend? Or are you still going to be 
here. No, I will no. be doing the exhibition at okay. the at the villages. So. Webby and I are going to be at that too. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh nice. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that'll be fun. We'll get some good times in there. Yeah, so. Andrea is running that one, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Andrea and um, uh, what's his name? Um, is it um Brandon? Yeah, Schmelling. Yeah, Brandon Schmeling. Schmeling. Yeah, that's yep. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that should be a fun tournament. I, the Grand Rapids crew, you know, from the Beer City Open, they're kind of the crew that we got connected with, and they're amazing, man. We love hanging out with them. Yeah, so. yeah they're really good people. Yeah. When you go up to Detroit, where do you where do you play at? So the only place I've ever played in Detroit is Royal Oak. Yeah. Mm. Other than that, I have not. I, I did. I was just there probably two or three days before coming here. Um, I did hear that there were some new uh, tennis clubs that had a bunch of court that were yeah. that were finally transitioning some of their courts to pickleball and really really going all in. I know like Gross Eel out there and a couple of I think Detroit Racket Club or something like that. Oh really? Um, all right. Yeah, they're finally yeah. they're finally transitioning where they're um, asking about pickleball and trying to get um, people to get out there and, and show their. Um, their members and okay. stuff like that. So it was, it was kind of neat to, to see how it's growing everywhere. That's great. Yeah. So where, so you're in Sarasota, where do you play typically down here? Um, so I typically play in either Bradenton, uh, like GT Bray park. Uh, there's a couple pros in that area, Jared and Abby Brooks. Mm-hmm. And then I travel to either Tampa or go down to Punta Gorda or, yeah. uh, Fort Myers. Okay. So wherever the play is really yeah, going you, on, you find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about an hour drive either way, so yeah. it's you. You can find good play in Florida yeah. for sure, definitely. Yeah, and it's outdoors. Yes, <laughs> yes. yeah, all year, all year round. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, well, I've been really excited to talk about this with you, Michael, about yesterday, because well, why don't you just share with everybody what went down here yesterday? It was men's doubles here at the Florida Grand Slam, right? Yep. yep. So I played the first time with uh, Noah Waddell, um, a good friend of mine, and we ended up, how did it go? So the first round, we won in three sets. Uh, The second round, we played against Aspen Kern and Tyler Loom. Um, That was probably one of the most entertaining matches, I would say, um, because Noah is just all over the place, and He's a crowd pleaser, so it was uh, it was a really fun match. Unfortunately, we didn't win that one. Uh, we lost in three, and we played. I think we played one more match. Uh, game to fifteen, we won that, and then we had to play Tyson McGuffin and Morgan Evans, and we pulled off a pretty awesome upset there. Yeah, and it was a very tight one. Uh, we managed to pull it off, sixteen fourteen. Uh, in the game to 15. So it was, um, it's probably my best one thus far. So it was, uh, I'm really excited a, about not it. Not a bad one to have there for right. sure. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. man. And I actually, we got to watch that game from right here and that was intense. Absolutely intense. So much fun to watch. It was going back and forth, both teams trying to apply pressure. Like what was going on in your head during that match? Was there any point where you were sitting there thinking like, oh my God, we can actually win this? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and actually, I got a couple comments after the match that they could tell it was at that point. Um, I think it was around 12, 11, 12, yeah. 12. It was still really tight, and it was there was a dink or two that I I missed in the net, and um, but it was at that point where we both I mean we both realized that we can win this, yeah. and um, we're just focusing on. I was focusing actually more on Noah instead of myself because it takes the pressure off yourself. And what's interesting playing with him is his style is so he's all over the place and it's really easy to focus more on him versus sure. myself because like, because he's all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that really helped me get through the match and just communicating, uh, with each other and, um, pulling off the upset. So, you, you, you guys are very vocal on the court. Yeah. Um, yeah, I apologize if we were a little loud out there. Probably <laughs> probably more me than him. Um, but, yeah, just when you're in that moment, it's yeah. it's really exciting. And, um, yeah, 
I probably was a little loud at the end. So, <laughs> so it, does this go down as like your top moment in pickleball? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have to say, so far, um, that was the best one so far. And uh, looking to challenge myself more yeah. and uh, get even better ones. All right. And then today you were uh, you were with Michelle King. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this was our first time playing together. Um, it was it was fun playing with her. We had some good matches. Uh, we went two and two today. Um, had a good win um, with against Deckel Barr and Katie Dyer. Mm -hmm. And um, overall, it was a good day. Like I enjoyed playing with her. And uh, yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah. Well, great. Well, hey, I really appreciate you guys being on the show. This has been awesome. Hey, hey, buddy. What's going on? What's going on, Landon? <laughs> <laughs> we got a little friend here. Yeah, this is uh, Simone's son. Hey, Landon. What's going Landon. on, buddy? Yeah. You want to talk to the mic? You can go ahead. You want to say something? No. Say something on the mic. Can we move these? Yeah. You can. It's, can it's you like beat your mom in pickleball? No. No. <laughs> Not yet. Say something. Mm. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Sing a song. What's your favorite song? No? No, okay. No, we're all done with that? <laughs> Is it soft? <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for visiting. <laughs> well, that was great. Um, well, thank you guys again for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, this has been an awesome tournament. Got to meet some great people here, so I'm looking forward to being able to see you guys again in he here in the near future. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We look forward to it. Awesome. And welcome back, everybody. Um, I was able act I was able to actually walk around and find the host of this amazing tournament. You guys know him. You guys love him. We're talking about Simone Jardim and Chad Edwards. What's going on, guys? We're uh, almost done. <laughs> We're, uh, I think, I think we're a little, uh, little, little mind fried right now. Yeah. So it's, uh, we put in over a hundred hours this week. So I was going to say like, you know, how, how much sleep have you gotten in the last, uh, the last week here? I've been running off about three hours of sleep each night. Yeah. Uh, this morning with competing has gotten a little bit more. Yeah. Is that what you guys do? You compete on the pickleball court and for who can get more sleep? He usually is terrible for sleep. He usually <laughs> just doesn't get a whole lot of sleep anyways, like on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, where I need it. Otherwise, I'm super cranky, and yeah. uh, he doesn't want to be around me anyways if I'm that cranky. <laughs> so it's not good for any of us. But uh, anyways, I mean, you know, Chad... Um, did an amazing job not just coming into the tournament uh, the preparation to it uh, he did a lot of it and I know that he hates it because a lot of people oh Simone's tournament Simone's <laughs> tournament uh, and uh, you know it's the part of uh, I guess the the burden of being married to me uh, <laughs> along with a lot of other things uh, he can tell you all of those things but anyhow uh, one of the biggest things is is that a lot of the times he does not get the credit and he did a lot of the work I would say uh, mm. 70 to 80 percent of it and uh, I get to get all the credit. So, um, and then on top of that, also have to say that we are very, very lucky um, that we have so many people who are still here helping clean up. Uh, but with the referees, you yeah, know, Bob and Diane. Right uh oh. Yeah. See, they're still working. Uh, Bob and Diane and all of the volunteers who have put in so many hours uh, just uh, helping us out. And, you know, a lot of them, uh, most of them are our clients. Mm -hmm. So we've created some great relationships here uh, in the short time that we've been in Naples. So we're really, really, really lucky. That's awesome. I got to tell you, when, when I looked at pickleballtournaments.com just a few weeks ago and I saw all the people that were going to be here, I was like, are you kidding me how does how does nobody knows about this and like it, it was crazy i was like oh my gosh all the top pros this was incredible this was such a fun weekend yeah i mean we actually we talked about doing it larger and having more prize money but we wanted to you know make sure that one that we could cover it when we when we first put it on pickleballtournaments.com mm -hmm. so you know we can't thank our sponsors enough uh tyrol you know they're they're a big a big sponsor, uh, getting into the into the shoe market, develop develop pickleball specific shoes. Um, obviously Prince uh, and also Paddle Tech, 
Um, we've got uh, Phil and Phil team with Angle and Volkers. Phil Metz is actually one of our instructors. He's also a real estate agent down mm -hmm. here. Um, and then we've got uh, ilovepickles.org and Pro-Am Tennis and Pickleball here. So um, a lot of these sponsors are our sponsors all year round. So that kind of helps us to, to you know, get the prize money, raise the prize money. Um, ideally, next year we want to go bigger. Uh, we want to have larger prize money. Uh, and we're going to hopefully have at least six more courts next year. Okay. So you guys have eight right now, so almost doubling the size here, huh? Yeah. Yep. yep. That's, the, that's the goal. Yeah. Hopefully that will happen. And, you know, honestly, like, I'm so thankful because the, the pros, we are competitors. We compete against each other. Uh, but the thing is, is that when we started talking about doing this tournament, I started messaging them and I said, hey, listen, this is what we're going to have and whatever it is that we can do to get yeah. you guys here. So, again, the community, huge help because our, our um, clients housed a lot of them. And uh, so it makes appealing when you're coming into a tournament and you don't have those expenses right. that you can stay somewhere and then, you know, having a little bit of money with the prize money being pretty decent. Uh, and I think that that, you know, makes it more appealing. Plus, it's February and it was really, right. really hot. Usually it it's not this hot. hot this right. You know, I, I have to say it is not this hot usually, but it is um, it was really, really hot this this you know, this weekend. Yeah. Um, I mean, you live here yep. and we have ha not had this kind of heat. Holy moly. Yeah, it's been uh, unseasonably warm. And we were actually just talking about that, how nice it was to have air conditioning here, too. Yep. So on top of the great pickleball courts and on top of great restrooms and showers, access to air conditioning, uh, that, that puts it up there on my list for yeah, sure. It, just, it, it helps you, you know, to, to take a break, get yeah. in. Get some air conditioning, cool off a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's where I spent the day today. <laughs> it also helped, uh, you know, we try to give 10, 15 minutes between a match, especially yeah. as we go longer in the day. Sometimes it's a longer break. So when you can go inside, cool off, um, it's it's tough because it, it's it's today it was even hot in the shade. It, yeah. it, was, it, it was it was hot regardless of when you're outside. So, um, but also, you know, going along with, with, um, you know what was Simone was saying with it with our clients and um, you know housing the pros it also um, gets the community feeling like they're a lot more involved in the tournament yeah, as well right so um, you know just something as simple as like the, the food truck that came yesterday mm. um, they were blown away by how many people were here and how many people they served in such a short period of time. I would say for majority of, of the time we had, you know, three hundred people here watching. I would I would I would estimate two, oh, yeah. two to three hundred people. That was nice. You know, and, Yesterday and was huge. It was it was it was crowded around around these around these courts. And it yeah. just it makes for a great atmosphere for everybody coming and playing as well. Yeah. Absolutely. I like I said before. I had a blast at this tournament. I thought this was one of the one of the funnest and, and, and the best pickleball that I've ever seen live has taken place here this weekend. Oh, I appreciate it. Every time I come and I watch a tournament, I feel like it just gets incrementally better and better. Oh, and, it's getting better and better for sure. Yeah, and you're you're leading the pack there, Simone. We'll see for how long. <laughs> <laughs> getting a little old. Yeah. Uh, no, I honestly I think it it went all five days because you know we did have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit complicated. We're so um, glad that we got it through on Wednesday. We had two rain delays yeah. and uh, for the women's, and we got it through. We didn't get out of here until almost ten o'clock, but we we made it on Thursday. Unfortunately for the mixed doubles, we couldn't finish. We we finished some of the draws, but the rain hit us hard again at like seven thirty. So it then we had to suspend. I mean, we couldn't we right. couldn't you know wait. There was no sun at that point. Uh, and then Friday was just like fried everybody. You know, it was uh, sorry. That's all good. Uh, uh, it was like the day where uh, everybody I think fried for the first time because right. it was it was hot, hot, oh, we hot. Went, that, was, that was a twelve-hour day of, yeah. of, and everybody was by by the evening was was definitely fried. Yeah. But it's, it ended up, you know, ended up that we got a lot of matches done. I don't know. I don't have the numbers. I'm sure Chad has the numbers, but you know, in five days we probably got 
over a hundred. I, I don't know. So how. we uh, the first day, I think we did 124. Wow. 124 matches. Uh, we for that mixed out, yeah. for mixed doubles, we tried to get in 174 matches. We didn't, and I think we got to somewhere around 150. Wow! So we still had we still had 20 matches left. <laughs> once oh, the rain geez. came, uh, and then uh, Friday we got in a uh, hundred and I think 100, 136 matches. That's incredible. Um, yesterday yeah. we got in uh, 85 matches, and then today we got in another 70 matches. So. Wow. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot impressive. of a lot of matches on eight courts yeah. over five days. So long days for sure. <laughs> he wants to participate That's as fine. a Fidel. This is yeah. Landon. Hi Landon. Say, say hello. Hi. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> Are you proud of your mommy and daddy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, this this is the part where we're yeah. full time parents as well. So gotcha. Landon is You're five, alive. Alexis is nine. So on top right of there. that, you know they've been here every day. They've been very patient. Okay, Bubba. Okay. All right. Yeah, they seem to have been really. Yeah. No, you want more? I know. Yeah, later. I know. They, it seems like they enjoy being here too, huh? Dave. Yeah. Well, everybody everybody knows them. They've <laughs> Bubba. They've become very very confident <laughs> around. Yeah pickleball people mm -hmm. so it's 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 a big family a big you know family. it's a it's a it's a very welcoming environment with so many different people from so many different backgrounds yeah. so um i you know i've i've said it so many times before but i haven't been involved with something of this magnitude i've been involved with a lot of sporting mm -hmm. events especially tennis but to have to be able to be with people from all ages you know, and, and male, female, different backgrounds mm -hmm. from so many culturally different, right. but also, um, you know, financial, everybody, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a very unique experience. Yeah. It's crazy how this sport, you know, smashing a wiffle ball around is brings everybody together, but there's something about it that is just addicting mm -hmm. and fun and encouraging and it yeah it draws a very diverse crowd i think you nailed it so no it's yeah. it's incredible and i think uh that's why it is growing so fast because it's you know it's grandpa grandma right. and then you have you know somebody like him he's five years old and he can hit pickleballs yeah. and you have somebody that is 80 i i have we have a 70 year old 72 uh, Stuki, who is amazing, he hangs with us yeah. on Monday nights. Like we have a group, and and so you're talking about so many different ages. We have probably the youngest one is is 20, 23, 24, and then the oldest one is 72. Wow, like getting together. I to actually play. I actually played with Jim. Oh yeah, first uh, U.S. Open. First uh, 2016, uh, yeah. 2017 U.S. Open. He was my he was my doubles partner. We were playing in the, they got in the 20, yeah. 25 and over. Yeah. And yeah, and he was he was hanging with the with the young guy. That's and awesome. So yeah. It's, it's and yeah, they got a silver medal. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. That's a, yeah. That's one great thing too is it brings everybody of all ages together. Yeah. You know, it's a sport that you know your grandkids and grandparents can yep. go on and at least play a game, right? You know, you don't have to spend a month trying to learn how to play it, you can show up at the court and at least have fun. Oh, always, yeah. always. Yeah, I mean, we, we teach, you know, every day and we see that, that people get hooked right away because they feel the sense of accomplishment that they can do it, you know, like, like playing other sports. Mm -hmm. Tennis takes a long time to get decent at it. Yeah. Golf, I still can't hit a golf ball <laughs> to save my life. So That is, that is an absolute yes. fact. Yes, so, so absolute with pickleball, fact. you see a lot of people that come out and then they hit it for the first time and they're like, oh, I can do this. And they play a game. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, you know, now I'm in. And, and, uh, and then they are just here every day and it's a part, you know, yeah. it's a part of their life for sure. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I actually didn't like pickleball the first time I played. Oh, really? No. Well, uh -huh. he hurt himself. So. What? <laughs> third, third ball, third ball in, pulled my butt muscle. I was like, oh man, this game sucks. <laughs> the ball doesn't bounce. I hit as hard as I can. It doesn't go anywhere. And then uh, Simone continued playing, and about a month later, she's like, hey, you know, the group of guys, are, they're just a really great great group you should come out and try it again i was like oh, i don't know you know there's beer after and then it was five dollar yeah. pitches of beer for pickleball players i was, I was like, like oh okay, yeah i'll, I'll try that and then and then once you 
Yeah, it was the same thing. Is is the first time we went out and played, we're just hitting the ball around. Yeah. And then we got with a group, and and it's kind of like, all right, now we're starting to play pickleball the 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 right way. And then it was, well, not necessarily the right way, but but more competitive. Sure. And then it was, I think for us, it was just, it was something new. We'd done as much as we could with tennis and baseball, and. Um, now it's time to, to learn something new, develop some new skills. And I, and I got too excited about, about playing, competing, and, and everything else like that. And, you know, three years ago, we decided to quit our jobs and move down here and mm-hmm. do pickleball full time. So yeah, we haven't looked back. Well, it's definitely worked out for you guys. I mean, you have a great thing going here. Obviously, you know, Simone, your level of play is unbelievable. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun to be able to watch you out there, which is great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank so what? You. So what's next? What what is next for you guys? Uh, well, uh, we are busy. We've still got our programs that we're running yeah. for the next, you know, f- couple months for sure. Uh, the U.S. Open. Everybody's coming down here and wanting to get ready for it, uh, which is a good idea because mm-hmm. with this heat, if it keeps it up, you know, you gotta get acclimated. Otherwise, mm-hmm. there'll be a lot of people getting sick. Yeah. Uh, you know, during a week of play of this heat. Uh, so yeah, so we have all sorts of stuff going on with the academy. And then after that, uh, we probably will take a little bit of time off after the U.S. Open, maybe get a vacation in or something. At least a couple. At least, least a couple, least of, a days couple of days. Off. And yeah. then, uh, and then the summer gets really busy, you know, with the, sure. with the kids, and we travel a little bit, playing and and teaching. Uh, but we'll still have a little bit here. It's just that it's you know it rains uh, yeah. a little bit during the summer, and uh, but we d- we head to the to the to California Midwest uh, teaching. We're gonna be in Ohio for for a few uh, a few uh, a couple weeks, and in Michigan for a week. So uh, we'll we'll get the, the 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 nice of the both worlds the the summers in the Midwest, yeah, and then the, the rest of the year here. So yeah, that's the way to do it. Yep. So we feel lucky, and uh, we're yeah. looking forward to it. Well, that's awesome. So any other any other parting words for us here, guys? I know you're busy trying no. to get everything wrapped up <laughs> no, here. No, you no, good. No, oh, it's, well, it's we're just again. You know, I can't say enough that we're very thankful. Uh, we are so lucky to be involved with this community, and I think when things like this, you know, this kind of event where we have five days and uh, people show up every day mm. no matter how hot it is and they come here and they help out and they you know they literally are are unbelievable and not just clients they are friends and and we know we can count on them yeah so thank you That's yeah awesome. no and and i would just say you know i want to say thank you for you uh you know firstly for for reaching out and, and, <laughs> yep. and getting involved and everything else like that and uh and with carl for for yep. doing the live streaming it just um you know, it's it's just a great way to to not only have people see pickleball uh, and get to watch the matches and everything else like that, but it it, it brings a little bit a uh, little bit extra to our tournament to know that because if if the other pros are like Simone, they'll go back and they'll watch their matches you know, yeah. a couple of hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> Study is, it, is that we, true? Is it? Oh no no, yeah. no no no! So we get off the pickleball court after all day, and then she she <laughs> she lays in she lays in bed, and, and and it's still the sound of pickleball going through our house like the the whole time. But oh, uh, I'm a coach. I've been a coach my whole life. <laughs> if I if I didn't do it, I I you know like you, but you learn so much from from your losses. So. I don't watch the wins. I watch the losses. Yeah. Because I want to know what I, you know, what happened here and what could I've done differently. And, you know, it's the only way to learn. I mean, I, I wouldn't play it if I wasn't competitive and wanted to win. Mm-hmm. But I know that losing is part of it. it. You know, it keeps you on your toes and and makes you want to be better. And I feel like I'm still improving and I yeah. want to get better. So. Yeah. That's great. As much as he hates it. <laughs> no, I don't. I I don't hate it. Yeah. But she has to have the volume like up. <laughs> as well. She has to hear the the tick of the pickleball. It's not like she can watch it with mute. We've got to actually have the sound. It needs the sound effects of, of hitting yeah. the ball. But I need to get earplugs. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, no. And then also, uh, if anybody wants any information on any of the programs that we have here oh. at Bonita Springs YMCA, um, go to our website. Peak peak. Uh, peakpickleballacademy.com um, we are Peak Performance Pickleball Academy but just drop the performance and uh, yeah we've still got um, 
we've we've still got private, semi-privates, group lessons. Uh, we've got our weekly our weekly clinics. So. Maybe you need to come out here I, and play I some. I should, yeah, oh, absolutely. Play some. Well, I thought you were going to say that he needs to take lessons. That would have been a little hard. No. Oh, no, I do need to take <laughs> lessons. Oh, I do. Yeah. I didn't say that. I do need to take <laughs> lessons for sure. Hey, we'll get you out here. Yeah. No, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you to everybody for, uh, for, for tuning in and watching and come out and watch next year. Yeah. I can't wait to see what's going to be happening here, guys. I can't wait to follow the journey. And, yeah, I might be, uh, I might be coming up here. On a more frequent basis. I mean, this you is great. can't you can't beat that, yeah. right? That background is is like it's not just the yeah. you know in the middle of nowhere. It's the view is pretty nice. It, mm -hmm. It's uh, you know, like people said, it's it's this is Florida, so yeah. that's nice. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you guys again for being on. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, just wow, that was incredible. We were able to have some amazing guests today here at the Florida Grand Slam. Obviously, we had Cassandra Gerke and Adam Stone. Then Joey Farias and Michael Leonard came and hung out with us. And then I was able to, uh, to go pull from, uh, from doing their cleanup duty here, Simone Jardim and Chad Edwards. Uh, today's been absolutely amazing so much fun i hope you guys went out to the pro pickleball facebook page to see some of the matches live streamed uh big shout out to carl man he had a great solid production out there we had a lot of technical issues but hey this is what happens when you go live there's not a whole lot you can do about that uh i hope you guys enjoyed the commentary big thanks to josh j pickleball for helping out yesterday with that you know his commentary was uh was absolutely extraordinary provided such a great you know, overview on things, uh, very technical and this is great. Wonderful facility. This has been a lot of fun. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. This has been podcast 34, obviously totally different than everything that we've normally done in the past. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And on that note, I'm Eddie. See ya.